Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. So, gaming dropped a couple of days ago along with Jianyun. So, it's about time I make a full guide on gaming, the teams you can play him in, and how strong he is, and yeah, all that good stuff. So, let's get started. Let's talk about gaming's kit. So, first up is his normal attacks. They don't do anything special by themselves. And they have a decent scaling because he's a Claymore user. You might or might not use them depending upon what kind of player you are. I will cover that in this combo section, so let's skip that for now. His elemental skill, B Shell Ascends, makes him pounce forward a short distance. If he hits an enemy or even a surface like a wall or an elevated ground, then he will jump high into the air and he will be able to perform a special plunging attack which is called plunging attack charm cloud strider now this attack scales in, within his skill talent levels however it does count as plunging attack damage so any bonus you have to plunging attacks will apply to this as well and once gaming plunges down it will cost him 15 percent of his max hp as well next up is gaming's elemental burst swanee's skilled dance when you use this burst Swanee Manshai will spawn and deal AoE Pyro damage equal to 666 of gaming's attack at talent level 10. He will heal gaming for 30% of his max HP and gaming will enter Wusho stance. When gaming is in Wusho stance, every time he casts his elemental skill B shall ascend and plunges down. If gaming is above 50% of his HP, then Manshai will spawn again fall nearby, link up with gaming and reset his elemental skill cooldown. So then you can plunge down again and if again gaming is above 50% HP then Manshai will be spawned and you kind of just rinse and repeat until your Wusho stance durations runs out. Let's talk about his even passive now. When B shell ascends, plunging attack, charmed cloud strider hits an opponent. Gaming will restore 1% of his max HP once every 0.2 seconds for 0.8 seconds. So basically you will gain 4 instances of healing. It helps you regenerate some HP because you lose 15% whenever you plunge down. With this you can gain 6% back up. You are still HP negative but because this is divided into 4 instances of healing, you can pretty much stack Marishas instantly. His other passive, Air of Prosperity, gives him 20% incoming healing bonus when his HP falls below 20%, I mean 50%, my bad. But when gaming has 50% or more HP, the special plunge from his elemental skill gets boosted by 20% extra damage percent. His exploration passive is just movement speed buff during the hours 6 to 18. Now let's talk about gaming's constellations. His C1 makes it so gaming is now HP positive. He loses 15% HP when you plunge down, gains 6% backup from his A1 passive and this constellation restores another 15% when Manshai links back up with him. So essentially you have 6% positive HP which does matter because it will overheal you and whenever you overheal his C2 gives you 20% attack for 5 seconds. So uh, as long as you are not getting hit, gaming by himself will be enough to prog keep 100% of time on the C2. His C3 is pretty cool, it's uh, elemental skill levels and his special plunge attack scales with his elemental scale levels. So yeah, that's pretty cool, kind of nice damage. His C4 is very very good constellation because gaming does have some energy requirements and some energy issues. This makes it so basically you can restore 10 to 12 energy depending upon how many plunges you are doing and it can significantly aid in gaming's ER requirements. His C5 is kind of nothing special, it just burst level, so it's nothing too crazy. His C6 is very fucking good. It's 20% crit rate and 40% crit damage to a special plunging attack. And its plunge radius will also be increased. So yeah, that's a pretty broken constellation. For talents, prioritize his skill, followed by his normal attacks, and then the burst. Now let's discuss gaming's artifact options. His best set is going to be the 4-piece Mareshwase Hunter. It just gives him a lot of stats and a lot of useful stats. And he can pretty much stack it instantly within one plunge. So yeah, that's going to be his best set. Other options that you can consider are Vermilion Hereafter. Although the attack is slightly less valuable. And without Farina, the stacking on the Vermilion is also kind of slow. The other two sets that I think are pretty good on him are Crimson Witch of Flames 
and gilded dreams but keep in mind mario joseph will not be his best slot always for example if you have gaming c6 it gives him 20 percent crit rate on his special plunge he has yanyun on the team she gives you 4 to 10 percent crit rate and then if you're using a crit rate claymore like serpent spine or the bacon then you are going to be vastly over capping on crit which is not good at all it's just wasted stats in that case crimson witch and gilded dreams are both going to be interchangeably his best in slot with vermilion being slightly behind them both in terms of artifact stats you want to go attack or em sands pyro damage goblet crit rate or crit damage circlet depending on whichever you need more of but make sure to get uh, enough energy recharge 130 to 140 before c4 should be enough to make a comfortable rotation with c4 you can lower those energy requirements by 20 to 25 percent depending upon the team you are playing game in now let's talk about gaming's weapon options i will mention first that the claymores aren't really that good of a weapon so we don't really have a good selection of weapons within the claymores which is why you can kind of go with any of the options that I mentioned. You don't have to worry too much about it. The damage difference won't be that big. So let's get into it. For the 5 stars, his best options are going to be the Wolf's Greystone, the Enforge, Red Horn for just the crit damage and Beacon of the Reed Sea. These are all going to be similar in terms of strength, nothing too different. You can go with either of them depending upon whichever you have. But another option that I didn't see people mentioning which is not that bad on gaming is Skyward Pride. Now yes uh, it's kind of an underwhelming claim over but you can kind of use gaming normal attacks you won't use charge attacks but you can use his normal attacks in between your combos that I'll mention shortly and the ER is kind of useful it's about the kind of ER you would want to build on gaming so if you can use it then it's not a bad option at all you can go for it. Now as for the 4 star options, his best option will be R5 Serpent Spine, nobody is surprised, it's even better than the 5 star options, cool. Now the Lithic Blade is uh, an option that you can use but honestly do not consider it before R3 because it's kind of co-op, uh, even in his best team with like Xianyun and Gaming, you only get 2 stacks so yeah it's kind of whatever, at least have it at R4 or R5 then you can consider it as a good option. Other good options that I personally like a lot are R5 Mailed Flower or the R5 Rain Slasher. Both of them are very very good and competitive with the Wolf's Greystone, the Enforged and such and sometimes even being slightly better. Much like Lithic Spear, there's another limited weapon banner option that you can use if you have it at high refinements which is the Akhaira Aquamarine. It gives you elemental mastery which is pretty good and it gives you bonus attack based on your elemental mastery which is also pretty good. The ultimate overlord's mega magic sword which is the 4.3 event weapon is also pretty good. It gives you a lot of attack and not too much ER so you don't waste it. But if you don't have that either then in the end you can always use the fontaine craftable tide or shadow. It just gives you a lot of attack. It's passive synergy as well with gaming. So yeah, you can use it if you don't have anything else. If you are in the overworld or if you are having severe energy issues, then you can also go with a fab great sword on your gaming. It's not that bad honestly, it just gives you a lot of energy recharge and particle generation. It's honestly pretty comfortable and I also like to use it on my gaming. It's pretty good. Yeah, you can give it a try if you are having your issues or if you want to use him with comfort in overworld. If you think there are some weapon options that I did not mention then that's because a better one is readily available for you or that those weapons don't synergize with him at all. Okay, so that will be about it for the weapon section. And now we will get into the more detailed stuff. So first up is gaming's combos. There are mainly three types of combos you can do on gaming depending upon what you have. First will be with C6 Bennett and Xianyun. Second will be with C6 Bennett but no Xianyun. And third will be neither do you have C6 Bennett nor do you have Xianyun. I will give you combos for all three. You can either do the skill first and then burst or you can do the burst first and then get two more elemental skills in quick succession to front load a lot of damage when you have all your buffs active. However, the latter will consume more aura because you are applying pyro faster than usual. So if your team does not allow it, then you should do EQ. 
but otherwise almost always you want to do Q first and then your elemental skills. But one thing I would like to add into the combos is that these are applicable for most of situations. However, if you are playing melt, then please do not use anything other than your special plunges unless your auras allow you to do so because you will be missing out on melts on your special plunge. So first up, without C6 Bennett. When you do not have C6 Bennett, you are going to be spamming gaming's elemental skill plunges and running towards your Wanshai to catch it and get a 6th plunge in your duration because normally you will be getting only 5, this way you can get 6. Now if you have C6 Bennett in the team but no Xian Yun, then you will be spamming skills as usual but whenever your skill is on cooldown, you will be spamming your normal attacks. This adds a lot of extra motion value that you otherwise miss out on and you only lose on one extra of a special plunge and yeah it's honestly just a very good trade off. Now if you have both C6 Bennett and Xian Yun, then whenever your elemental skill is on cooldown on gaming, you can do a normal plunge. However, do not do any more than 3 because his A1 passive 20% damage bonus as well as his C6 40% crit damage and 20% crit rate bonus does not apply to the regular plunges. So you don't want to waste Xian Yun's buff on those. And now comes the time for gaming's teams. Much like Diluc, you can play him in Burgeon, Monopyro, Vape and Melt and even Overload. Now he's not the greatest Burgeon unit obviously, his Pyro is kind of slow and he does have some energy issues so yeah not really recommended to run him in Burgeon but obviously you can if you don't have any other team options to play with him and you just want to play him right. The next option will be Mono Pyro, just as always, literally every single Pyro character works in this team. You just slap them with Bennett, Shangling and Kazuo and boom, your team is ready, you are clearing stuff. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, nothing much to say about this. Overload teams are also a fine option, as long as you don't have Bennett in them because, well, you know, Bennett puts you in circle impact and he's a melee character and you overload. Do I really have to say it? Now his intended role is that of a carry, mostly for wave but you can put him in melt and he will work just fine. I will be covering both the wave and melt teams and as many variations as I can in this single video along with the rotations, swirl setups and everything you need to know. First thing I would like to mention about the melt teams is that we currently lack good cryo options for gaming. There are a couple that you can use and they work but mostly it's an uptime issue because you need to be applying cryo consistently over 10 to 15 seconds so that gaming can keep melting all of his hits which is kind of not doable with a lot of the units uh, you will see shortly how it ends up being but uh, generally with most cryo units you are going to be choosing between having a good VV uptime or having a good cryo uptime for your melts. One last thing before we start with the rotations and team variations is that I will be showing you how to do the double sword and pyro sword setups in your teams, in your weapon melt teams. However, you don't necessarily have to do them. I will give you a one rotation as an example where you do not do your pyro sword. So you can use that as an example and apply that to the rest of the teams as well if you do not want to bother with it, which is completely fine, I understand. And even though it is possible to get your pyro sword without C6 Bennett, it's a lot more scuffed and you kind of run into some more uptime issues, stuff like that. So yeah, in that case, I recommend you try to not sword at all. Yeah, simple as that. First up, we will cover melt teams that use Yan Yun and then we will cover melt teams that use your traditional animo units like Kazuha and Sucrose. Now in the following sections my gaming will be using this exact build except maybe one or two clips so if you try to replicate these teams you will most probably get better results in terms of damage. The first cry option that you can use for melt and gaming teams is Rosaria. She is 
probably the overall best option who has good cryo application along with good uptime for gaming to get all his special plunge melts. First, Rosalia melt with Kazuha, Shanyan or Sukros. You can't run! Light out! Mighty Mythical Beast! Now Rosaria, if you want to use Kazuha's burst. The other good cryo option is going to be Ganyu. She does have pretty good burst up time, which is going to be, as you will see ahead, the issue for most of the cryo units. And now Ganyu if you do not have Xianyun. You can also use Kazuha's burst if you have a C2 and want to activate it. However, you will miss one melt. I do not know if there's any setup you can do that allows you to get all five melts on game. Everybody stand back! Up to it, Monsai! Hey, what give? Next up is a cryo option that I usually like when I'm playing Deluke and such Layla. The rotation remains the same even if you are not using Xianyun. Next cryo option is Kaya. Now he is actually pretty good if you are in AoE and you are killing enemies over and over so that you can activate his C2 and get more uptime. But if you are in single target and you are not activating that, then even though his cryo application is fast, it's not going to be good enough in terms of uptime to get you more melts. Plus, there's also the issue that when you're gaming jumps, Kaya's Icicles from his burst also go up with you so they stop hitting the enemy and applying cryo. <laughs> if you are using Kazuha then you will do something like this. Now I do not have C2 Sucrose, so you will tend to have better uptime on your prior application if you do. This is the rotation that you will be doing. A cryo option that just hacking sucks is Diona. Now why am I mentioning her if she sucks? Well because she can still hold instructor and LG to give you a meaningful buff and her C6 give you a big 200 EM. So yeah, depending upon what kind of units you have available, she might actually be worth using in your teams. If you are using Kazuha, then you kinda have to choose between having bad VV uptime or bad cryo uptime to get your melts. Everybody stand back! Up to it, Monsai! 
now with sucrose you get overall better performance with your vv uptime and better cryo uptime as well just have c2 not like me stuck on c1 even after playing for two years That will be it for the cryo options and honorable mention will be Chong Yun if you do not have C6 Bennett because you then you can then use gaming's normal attacks to apply cryo and then his E to melt, yeah stuff like that. And the other honorable mention will be double cryo, very easy to play, very easy to set up, just snapshot everything onto Bennett's buff and just melt with your gaming, that's it, nothing too crazy, it's very very simple, you can play it if you want. Now let's move on to wave. Again, I will be showing you the rotation variations for both with Xianyun and without Xianyun. First up, we have Furina. She applies Hydro and she gives you a shit ton of buff from her fanfare while also doing a great amount of personal damage as well. She is essentially the premium Hydro option for gaming. Both Xianyun and Sucrose will use a similar setup. Here it is. <laughs> Kazuha can also use the same setup, however, I like to use his burst here because I can. The next Hydro option will be obviously Sing Cho, pretty good Hydro uptime and he does good amount of personal damage while giving you a lot of Hydro, you just have to normal attack but if you have C6 Bennett you are gonna wanna do that anyway so it doesn't really matter. Only thing to keep in mind is that his orbitals can apply Hydro so make sure to play around that if you want to do a perfect soul setup. With Xian Yun, it will look something like this. Sucrose can also use the same setup as Yanyun. As for Kazuha, here's the setup. Run with nature. Next hydro option will be Elan, she does a lot of damage and she feels pretty good to use as well. Just one thing to keep in mind is that her hydro is a little slower so if you are spamming your normal attacks or normal plunges with Xianyun too much then you might run out of hydro so make sure to keep cancelling your normal attacks sometimes in between in order to keep the hydro aura. Again, Sucrose will use the exact same setup as for Kazuha. Here's the setup again. Into the wind. Gotcha. I'll do it, Monzai. Now if you do not want to do some of these sword setups that I displayed or you do not have CC Bennett for a couple of them then feel free to not do any sword setup at all in which case your rotations would look something like this as an example.
another hydro option that you can use is kokomi i do not have kokomi sadly so i will not be able to show you anything with her but i'm sure you can find some resources online forgive me for that so now let's talk about the conclusion how strong is he and how are my first impressions on him so gaming turned out exactly like i expected him to so if you watched my pre-release you know how strong i thought he was gonna be and yeah he's turned out pretty much the same he's pretty strong if you have his stuff he's pretty meh if you do not have his stuff yeah just like that and like i expected some part of the community as well as the content creators have an inflated perception of gaming's overall power level but that's okay i mean it's, he hits bigger numbers so that's gonna happen anyways <laughs> but yeah he's a pretty dang fun unit a lot more fun than i expected him to be i knew he was gonna be fun but he was even more fun i had a blast playing him and testing him so yeah that will be about it for the gaming guide i hope you enjoyed it i tried to deliver it as fast as i could but you know my circumstances you probably know if you read the community post but anyways i managed to complete it eventually here it is i hope you enjoyed it and tell me if you find a better gaming guide on youtube i will delete that community post i promise if you enjoyed my video then like subscribe and see you next time